He's way fast. Scram. Go, 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 go. Hey guys, Leslie here from the Seven Wayfinders. If you're new to our channel, my husband Chris and I are traveling around the world with our five kids and I'm joining you today from beautiful Portugal. Isn't it stunning? We're on a road trip around Europe, but I'm coming to talk to you about taking a bullet train in China. So we did a 17 day tour of China. We took some flights in between cities and two bullet trains. I just wanted to share some of the things that we learned that are kind of funny or good to know about taking one in China. First of all, they're amazing. All right, Dad. Okay. What do you think? This is like awesome. We really loved them a lot more than taking a flight, especially with kids. It's more room to walk around. It's tons more room. Look at this room, this space. Let's look. This is fantastic. Look how much leg room. Know. Show us your legs. Ooh. Oh, I can oh, barely touch the top And you have a foot rest. If I needed it. It's amazing. There was so much room. We did school, we ate, we could walk around. The bathrooms aren't nearly as intimidating. We had it booked through our tour company. So we used a tour company called China Highlights, which we highly recommend. And they were amazing to help us check in. I would say one of my first things that you need to know is it's really helpful to have someone help you check in. You need your passport. It can be a little bit confusing and hard to figure out. I was super grateful they were there and they kind of fast tracked us through. They also helped arrange a luggage person for us. We're paying for extra luggage service and I think it's Hi guys. Obviously, we're traveling around full time. We have a lot of luggage for seven people and only about two people that can carry it. <laughs> so we try and use luggage attendants when we can and this was super beneficial. They help you push your luggage around and then they also just make sure that you get on the train on time. It was a little bit of money. I want to say maybe like $50, but it, I thought it was totally worth it, especially because on our second one or our first one, we were running late. So second thing you need to know is you're supposed to arrive about an hour and a half before the train is scheduled to leave. We ended up only arriving about 30 minutes before because Harrison had been in the hospital and we were just lucky to make that train at all. Okay, we're in the waiting area. Our train leaves in 20 minutes, so I'm kind of curious at what point we actually get on. But we have an attendant, so I don't think we're missing anything. All these other people are just sitting there. They actually cut it a little close. We still made it, but the train did end up leaving one minute early. So do not be late. They're very much on time. Next thing you need to know is a little bit of train etiquette. We went on bullet trains in Japan and bullet trains in China, and they really couldn't be any more different. In Japan, you're supposed to be mega, mega quiet. In China, it's really not considered rude to be really loud. We had people playing their TV shows on their phones at full volume, talking at full volume, listening to music at full volume, snoring, and they just don't think it's that rude. So that was kind of nice with our kids because they could be kind of loud. and no one really cared. That's really different than taking a train in Japan, which I will share in another video. Next thing, I thought there would be a restaurant car. It was kind of implied that there was gonna be a restaurant car because we were on it for four hours. There is not, or at least there wasn't on the one we were in. There is like a snack car, so we were booked in kind of like the premium first class, which isn't all that different from the other trains. It's more just that you get a little bit of a larger seat. And I did walk all the way back and found kind of a snack bar, but there wasn't that much available. I think I bought ice cream and maybe some nuts. <laughs> it also is hard because we're gluten free. On our first one, they did walk around with like a full dinner for sale and it was a hefty dinner. It was actually really good. It had like five different sections of food with really good quality meats and seafoods. The second one though didn't have that and I was counting on that, so we were a little bit hungry. So. Maybe bring some snacks, buy the food when it comes around, because it only comes around once. The last thing you need to know is your luggage doesn't go in any specialized place. It ends up going at the back of the seats in the car you're in. So if there's other people that have large luggage, you might be kind of competing for the same space. Thankfully, most of the time it's business people going from one place to another in the same day. 
or they have just a really small overnight bag. So we didn't have a ton of issues, but there isn't like a designated baggage car and your big luggage isn't gonna fit above your seats. That's just something good that we wanted to know. We also had our wagon and some car seats, so we had a lot of stuff. It fit fine, but it is just kind of sitting back there at the end of the seats. Okay, enjoy your time in China if you make it there. We absolutely loved it. We loved what we saw, and hopefully you're gonna enjoy the bullet train as much as we did. We loved, they have a little speedometer that keeps going up as you're taking off, showing you how fast you're going. And thankfully, all of the signs are in Chinese and English, so it's not that hard to figure out as long as you know the name of your destination. <laughs> all right, enjoy your travels, guys. We'll see you later.